Well, it's time for us to take a look now at what's making news in the international papers. Diptyka Laurent is in studio. Uh, Dipti, I believe we're going to start with a visit by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to India that's causing controversy. That's right. He arrived on the weekend, but it is making some waves. Uh, Justin Trudeau, his wife and kids have been in, in India for, since the weekend for an official seven-day visit aimed at strengthening bilateral ties, also sealing some trade deals with India. The problem is, though, that certain Indian officials accuse Justin Trudeau of being soft on Sikh separatist movements in Canada, emerging from the Canadian Sikh community, uh, that they say could be plotting for a the creation of a separate Sikh state in India. Now, Trudeau says, for his part, that as long as they're not promoting violence, well, they have the right to free speech. That's according to the Canadian Daily Globe and Mail. But some papers say that the Indian Prime Minister looks like he's snobbing the Canadian. Well, it could appear like that, at least for some Canadian papers. They think that Narendra Modi may have snubbed Justin Trudeau on this visit over that dispute. Uh, now, Narendra Modi is a well-known nationalist, and he's totally against the cause of an independent Sikh state. Uh, one, one reason they think he might have snubbed Trudeau is because he didn't even take, he didn't meet him at the airport, but that's not really standard. He didn't even take to Twitter to acknowledge Trudeau's trip when he arrived. The Canadian website Global News notes that on the day Trudeau arrived, Modi they did tweet out a picture of himself with the Iranian leader. Uh, furthermore, Modi wasn't uh, present for Trudeau's trip to Modi's home state of Gujarat yesterday. So uh, many people say uh, that was this a deliberate move by the part of the Indian leader? The two men will be meeting, but it will be on the second last day of Trudeau's trip. And it's prompted, obviously, some papers to wonder if Trudeau has been given the cold shoulder. Now, both sides, of course, uh, deny this. One writer in the Indian Express has accused Canada of what he calls a vote bank politics, basically gaining votes through divisive policies, and even says that Trudeau's visit could, quote, end up aggravating differences with India. Okay, now there's one woman making the front pages of quite a few papers. You can see there Angela Merkel, of course, the Social Democratic Party, voting on whether or not to accept another grand coalition. But there's also quite a few papers talking about a mini Merkel. Tell us more about that. That's right. Merkel's mini me. Her name is Angret Kramp Karen Bauer. She's also known as AKK. Uh, uh, she's Merkel's mini me, at least according to the British Daily, The Times, and could one day lead her party, if not lead the country. Uh, now, Merkel has been under pressure from her party after failing to form a coalition after last October's elections. Well, AKK was the leader of Germany's smallest state, Saarland. Now she's been sort of shot to the top of the CDU party, the Christian Democrat Party, as general secretary. She'll be, from, from this position, she'll be able to build a national network if she wants to rise to the leadership. For information, she's 55. She's a conservative like Merkel. She joined the party at the age of 18, became a mother to three children who were brought up by her husband while she pursued her political career. Okay, so some slight overlaps there. Uh, that's the, the Anglophone papers, though. What are the German papers saying about her? Well, they're generally quite positive about this move. The website Tagesschau, which is a German national TV station, notes that she has flair, yes, but uh, she knows when to, quote, use her elbows. They call her unpretentious, quiet and brilliant, saying her, her accepting the position of general secretary is a risky move but comes at the right time, while Tagesspiegel, another German daily, says Merkel really led a coup. She took everyone by surprise. She took journalists by surprise and those within her own party, uh, a it was a decision nobody expected and uh, certainly not everyone is happy about. Okay, but I have to say I'm focusing on the girl power aspect of that. Mm -hmm. uh, meanwhile, Divtika, as calls mount for better gun reform in the US, you found a piece from Vox that really highlights the reality facing teachers there. This is quite harrowing, this piece. Uh, Dee Elizabeth, she's an educator now, she took, pens this piece in Vox, an American website, talking about school shooting drills. This has become an all-too-normal reality for many school students, if not all U.S. school students. Uh, you know, the alarm goes off, the kids have to evacuate the building. Then she talks to her students about going through possible scenarios with the kids, like should they jump out of a window, should they try and take on the gunman or distract him, what should they do if he ends up losing his are his weapon then the ultimate question came 
would she die to protect her students? Uh, Dee Elizabeth says quite reasonably in this article that she doesn't know. Uh, that's not in her job description. I quote, such superhuman bravery that we saw, for instance, at the Sandy Hook uh, shooting simply cannot be the, quote, routine expectation of educators, and yet it is a reality facing all teachers in U.S. schools today. Yeah, none of us would know until we're in that situation how we'd instinctively react. Uh, let's stay in the U.S. and go on to another story. There's talks of a, quote, skirmish in Involving Donald Trump and a visit to China. This, that's right. This is uh, this visit is was his visit last November. Now the website Axios re reports that last year, when Donald Trump and his entourage visited Beijing's Great Hall of People, they got into a sort of scuffle with Chinese security officials over the nuclear football. Now I'm not sure if you know what the nuclear football I is. Admit I don't, Dipti. <laughs> it's Enlighten not me. a football. It's actually like a little case that the president must carry with him at all times should he need to activate a nuclear attack. It's an extremely important tool that he has to have on him at all times. The scuffle uh, basically took place between secret, uh, secret Service officials and Chinese security agents. At one point, one agent may have even tackled a Chinese uh, security official to the ground. The Secret Service says th that it was pretty much uh, much ado about nothing. It, it sounds. It doesn't sound like it, though. No, it sounds quite alarming, I have to say. Uh, finally, let's end on a story that talks about quite an unusual way to train for the Winter Games. Well, the Wall Street Journal explains that Nordic, the Nordic combined event, which is ski jumping and cross-country skiing, is not really popular in the U.S. And in 2010, athletes found their budget slashed, so they had to look for other ways of training, uh, including forming a partnership in Slovenia and, in particular, a small town of Planica, which... They wanted a, a ski tunnel and an underground parking garage, but they didn't have room for both. So U.S. officials built this, a parking garage, and then filled it with artificial snow. And uh, this allowed athletes to train in the summer uh, by going up and down the parking floors. The only problem was that when it opened to the public, it was so popular that they never actually were able to open it as a parking garage. Instead, as a ski slope. It's quite impressive, but it does work. I've been once to the ice climbing world championships in South Spain, Switzerland, and similarly, they take it in an abandoned parking lot and fill it with ice it's to make like a mountain. Fun. It is actually, it does look like <laughs> fun. Difficult though. To particular on for the International Press Review, thanks a lot for that.